Any, any resemblance to any person living or dead is, is purely coincidental. It may, you may think it's about someone you know, um, but it's not. I, I wrote the words and I just made them up and it's nothing to do with me whatsoever. <laughs> you can think what you like. Okay, so this is it. The five of us studying art. Me, Spinner, Howie, Rodney and Spotter. Spotter knew never why we called he never knew why we called him that, but his family were really, really well off. And he was a very good friend, Spotter. Two of us had combis, and after a few months, the other three, thanks to no small amount of help from Spotter, also had combis. <laughs> in various states of colour and condition. It was an ongoing competition to have the most ludicrous interior spread around the five combis. These accessories included a heavy wrought iron outdoor garden setting <laughs> that made that combi very slow. <laughs> it could never catch up. A three piece suite, a standard lamp, a large painting of a family ancestor, a lava lamp, a Persian carpet, a set of bunk beds, ten beanbag chairs, a couple of pot plants, some nice lace, nice lace curtains, and a slightly modified grandfather clock. <laughs> Etc. Uh, we drifted in and out of these um, early 70s days, testing various available enhancers. Uh, some illegal and uh, others very illegal. Uh, the cricket trip was just that. Uh, we all woke up roughly around about the same day, uh, which we assumed to be a Sunday due to the bottles. Spotter bless him, produced some tiny tablets of which we all partook. <laughs> Slow down tablets, he called them. Do not try this at home. <laughs> Three hours later, we sort of came to. Howie seemed to be enthralled by something on the television, although it wasn't switched on. <laughs> Spotter, was, Spotter was trying to cook some eggs in a frying pan, which is normally quite straightforward. <laughs> As long as you've got the gas lit <laughs> and you're taking the eggs out of the shells. <laughs> Spinner seemed to be, for some reason or other, carefully weighing glasses of water and then running into his bedroom to see if he was still asleep. <laughs> he felt sure that he was dreaming but then decided he couldn't be because he wasn't in his bed. <laughs> Rodney was running in the bath with a towel wrapped around him, wondering why the water kept disappearing down the plug hole. <laughs> After we got it all sorted out, we decided to go for a drive. Do not try this at home. <laughs> we tried to fit ourselves into one of the combis, but after about an hour, we hadn't worked it out, so we took them all. <laughs> Do not try this at home. Off we all went, following Rodney. He kept stopping to ask us if we were going too fast. <laughs> No, we said, he'd only been going about five miles an hour. <laughs> the traffic was horrendous, but apparently after we got out of the bus lane, it improved dramatically. <laughs> so, we followed Rodney into a blissful park where we discovered a game of cricket being played. This was much more up our alley. We parked the rainbow of combis on the boundary and set to bringing out the necessities. Unable to figure out what was necessary, we got everything out. <laughs> and made camp. The dining set in, the bunk beds, the couch, the carpet, the lamp, the painting. Can you picture it? Spotter's mother had sent him some scones and he also had one of those camping gas stoves which he eventually managed to light. Do not try this at home. <laughs> Tea and scones, watching the cricket, all very civilised. We watched the game in very slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> Watch, we watched the batsman hit a four. We watched it come towards us, fascinated how it could travel so far, so slowly, hit the boundary rope, bounce up, and knock poor spinner out cold. We leapt into action, unfolded the put you up, and laid him on it. Howie said he'd go and get a steak and some ice for Spinner's Eye. He came back two hours later with a hamburger with the lot and, a, and an ice cream cone. Spinner said he didn't want either of them on his face, so we shared them around. 
Spunner amused himself for ages by standing on the boundary trying to get a Mexican wave started, unaware, unaware that more than one person was needed. Spinner, laying on the couch recuperating, was watching a small plane circling overhead. He then went into a long explanation of the way you exit a plane when you're parachuting. We were a great audience as we stared blankly back at him. We were hardly able to move. For small tablets, they certainly last a while. <laughs> when we didn't respond to Spinner's demonstration, he used the open side door of the combi to launch himself out and onto the grass. After several dives, Howie said, yes, but what if the plane is going faster than your combi? <laughs> As you all know, if you start the engine of a combi and put it into gear, it will drive along by itself. Sort of like autopilot. Spinner started, do not try this at home. Spinner started the engine, we all climbed in the back, Spinner got in with us, and with no one sitting in the front, we headed straight towards the game of cricket. To any observing cricketer, it appeared that we were taking turns rolling out of the pretend plane onto the grass and then hopping back in. To us, of course, we were free-falling. For what seemed to be about 20 seconds. And then we would gently land. It was amazing, right? We became experts, just, just like that. <laughs> No previous experience. Howie reckoned that he was free falling for about 10 minutes until we pointed out to him that he hadn't actually jumped out of the con because he said it was too high. The players who were watching on in disbelief were probably not sure whether to applaud or beat us up. We did break the stunts, but the umpire had his arms outstretched to halt play so the dismissal didn't count. Uh, much later, we, we had a discussion trying to figure out what they would have written on the score sheet. <laughs> so, on rumbled the combi, up a precarious bank, still driverless, while we all sat in the back, unaware that one of us wasn't actually driving. <laughs> Luckily, there were no roads, Tai Chi classes or lakes on our unknown itinerary. Just the par 5, 14th fairway of the Surrey Oaks Country Club. <laughs> which 150 years earlier had fortunately been designed to coincide with the direction of our airborne combi. <laughs> Eventually we stalled and even with all of us trying to push the combi we couldn't get it going again so in a ragtag procession we made our way back to the cricket match for more scones and tea. Romney suggested that we should cap the trip off with a round of golf seeing as we were so close to the course but the idea fizzled out pretty quick which was lucky really as we could have got into a spot of drama with the club pro quite a few golfers, the groundsmen, the club captain and various committee members all standing around at the 14th green wondering what to do with the Union Jack painted combi laying on its side in the bunker. Oh, yeah.